hey guys welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here you're welcome to sew with mediva and if you're a returning subscriber or a returning viewer thank you for sticking to my channel so in today's video i'll be showing you guys how to cut and sew this simple notched collar shirt and i made use of two yards of african print fabric to make this shirt if it's something you are interested in make sure to keep watching and make sure you watch till the end and if you find this video helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up leave a comment subscribe to my channel and share to your loved ones so i made use of two yards of this beautiful african print fabric but you will need more fabric if you want your shirt longer than mine you're also going to need your pattern paper because we're going to draft it on the pattern paper first before we transfer to the fabric you'll need your ruler your tape pro your scissors and your markers so we're going to start with the back panel so we're going to start with the back panel and we'll be drafting it out on the pattern paper so i have my paper here and it is not in a fold of two it is open just as you can see so i'm starting from one edge of the paper and the first thing i'm going to do is to draw out a starting line which is going to serve as the shoulder line for this shirt so from this shoulder line now i'm going to come down to the full length of my shirt so i want my shirt to stop directly on my hip line which is 24 inches so i'm going to come down by 24 inches from the shoulder line so if you want your shirt longer you can do 26 or 27 inches it just depends on what you want so after marking i'll go ahead to extend the lines this way so this is the shoulder line and this is the full length of the shirt so after doing that the next thing is to mark the neckline so the wideness of the neckline for this shirt is three inches while the depth of the back neckline is 1.5 inches after marking, go ahead to connect the points together with your curved ruler. And starting from the center back again, go ahead to mark your shoulder to shoulder measurements divided by two. So mine is eight inches. But because this shirt is a free shirt, I'm going to add one inch to it. I'm going to take nine inches for the shoulder measurements. And then from that nine inches mark, come down by one inch for the shoulder slope. And then connect it all the way to the neck width this way. So after that, the next thing is to place the armhole measurement. So go ahead to measure around your armhole area. So mine is 16 inches. I'm going to divide it by 2 to make 8 inches. But because it's a free shirt, you don't want it tight at the armhole area. I'm going to add 1 extra inch to that 8 inches to make 9 inches. And then I'll connect it all the way to meet the shoulder slope this way. And then I'll further extend the line to form the chest line. So let's go ahead to label the lines now. This is the chest line. This is the full length of the top, which is also the hip line. And the first line is the shoulder line. So I've gone ahead to trim out the excess paper that we have. So this is the chest line and this is the full length. And those are the two basic measurements we're going to need for this shirt. Because it's a free shirt, you don't have to shape it or add any that. So the next thing to do is to mark the round hip measurement on the hip line. So my round hip measurement divided by 4 is 11.5 inches. I'm going to add half an inch for ease and then I'll add 1 inch for seam allowance making 13 inches. So go ahead to mark your own measurement there. And then I'm going to mark that same 13 inches on this chest line. So whatever you are marking on your hip line is the same thing you mark on your chest line. And then connect it all the way down this way. So after connecting the two points, you're going to have a straight line that looks just like this. The next thing to do is to mark the armhole curve. So I'm going to come over to this armhole line and take the midpoint of the line. So mine is 4.5 inches. So I'll get my curved ruler now and connect it all the way to the chest line this way. So this is basically all for the back part of this shirt. Let's go ahead now to cut it out. So let's go ahead now to cut it out. So after cutting out, I'll label this as the back and when I'm cutting on my fabric, my fabric is going to be in a fold of two and this center back area will be at the closed angle of the fabric. So we're moving now to the front part of this shirt. So the front is different from the back because of the collar. So the front is going to carry the notch collar that we have on this shirt. So because of that, the first thing you're going to do is to come down from the upper part of your paper by 6 inches. 
and then on this side as well you are going to take the same six inches or you can do five inches so after doing that i'm going to then rule out the lines this way so we're going to need this space now at the upper part and in front of the shirt for the colors i hope you guys understand so this line is going to be the shoulder line now where we'll take the vertical measurement and this is going to be where we'll have the um, notched collar and this upper part is going to be for the collar that goes around the neckline. So from the shoulder line now I'm going to come down by 24 inches which is the same length I used for the back panel and then I would further extend the line. So note that you can make your shirt longer it just depends on what you want for yourself. So after marking out the lines, this is what we have. So this first line is going to be the shoulder line while this is going to be the hip line and the full length of the top. So like we did with the front panel, I'm going to come over to the center front now and mark the neckline. So the wideness of the neckline is still 3 inches while the depth of the front neckline is also 3 inches. And then I'll go ahead to use my curved roller to connect them together. After that, I'll come over to the center front again and mark the shoulder to shoulder measurements divided by 2 which is 8 inches plus 1 inch for ease making 9 inches and then come down by the shoulder slope of 1 inch and then connect the points together. So we're just repeating the same thing that we did with the back panel. So come down by your round armhole measurements divided by 2 and add 1 inch to it. So mine is 9 inches and then I'll connect the points together as well and then further extend the line to create the chest line so after that i'll go ahead to place the round hip measurements divided by four add half an inch for ease and one inch for seam allowance making 13 inches and i'll place that same measurement on the chest line and then connect the points together after that i'll mark the armhole curve so get the midpoint of the line and then use your curved roller to connect it all the way to the chest line this way so this is all for the bodies of the front. The next thing I want to do is to work on the notched collar. So before we draft out the collar, go ahead to extend this chest line all the way to the center front this way. And then the next thing I want to do is to mark the button allowance. So remember that this shirt is going to have button in front. So I'm going to come out by one inch from this chest line. I'll come out by one inch on the lower part and also extend the neckline by one inch. And then I'll go ahead to connect all the points together this way. After connecting the points, this is what you should have. So it's to overlap each other in front. And the next thing to do is to mark where you want the flap to stop. So I want mine to stop directly on the chest line. So I'm going to just extend the chest line into the button allowance this way. And from that chest line, I'm going to connect it all the way into the neckline of the front panel. So I want my flap to stop at that point. So this is what we have after connecting. So the next thing to do now is to draft out the collar that will go around the neck at the back. So to mark the collar that goes around the neckline, you have to measure what you have on the back neckline. So go ahead to measure what you have on the back neckline. So for mine, I have 4 inches. So I'll take that 4 inches that I have and extend from the shoulder line. I'll extend it by 4 inches in the form of a slanted manner following the, that same line. So it's a bit slanted. I'll just come up by 4 inches. And then I'll use my roller to connect it all the way to the neckline this way. So after connecting, you should have something that looks like this. So for this collar to sit well at the back, you're going to come to this line and just come out by a quarter of an inch. So after marking that, go ahead to use your ruler to just blend it into the line this way. So you're going to disregard the old line. After that, the next thing is to determine how wide you want your collar to be. So for mine, I made use of 3.5 inches. So I'm going to come out from this line and just extend it by 3.5 inches. So you can see that the tape rule is still not straight. It's still in the form of a slant. And then I'll use my ruler to connect it all the way down this way. 
So after doing that, you should have something that looks just like this. So after that, I'm going to come up to this button allowance or the neckline and then come up by 0.5 inches. So from that 0.5 inches mark, I'm going to now connect it to this point to form a slanted line this way. Just follow what I'm doing in the video. So after connecting the two points, this is what it looks like. So right now, I'm going to use the curved part of my ruler to just connect all the way up to the collar this way. So after doing that, this is what we have. So this is basically all on how to draft the collar part of this shirt. So let's go ahead now to cut it out. So let's go ahead now to cut it out. So I'm going to cut out this um, back collar first. So you're going to separate this collar from the bodies. So after cutting out, I will then cut out the remaining part of the shirt. So after cutting out, this is what it looks like. So when you sew your shirt, your collar is going to appear this way in front. You can see how beautiful. So let me label this as the front and I'm going to cut out two pieces of this pattern and I'm, I'll make sure I have seam allowance of half an inch all the way around it. I'll also do the same thing for the collar and for the back panels. So I have used the pattern to cut out the fabric and this is what it looks like. So this is the back panel. So I added half an inch on the neckline area, the shoulder area and the armhole and the lower part I also added one inch for folding allowance. So for the front I have already altered the pattern to cut out the lining but let me just bring the piece and show you guys. So this is what it looks like before. So I used it to cut out two pieces of the front and I added half an inch all around it apart from the side because we already have um, seam allowance. And then I altered the pattern to cut out the lining. So we're going to be using the same fabric as the front lining because of the color. So, so I came in by 4 inches and extended it all the way to the shoulder. So for the color, I also cut it out. I added half an inch all around it this way. And this part is in a fold of 2 as you can see. So this is what we have after cutting out. So I'm going to go ahead now and remove the patterns from the fabric so that we can start joining them together. So we're going to start joining with the front part. So I'm going to just open up the two pieces together. So it's going to appear this way on the right side. That is why you have to use the same fabric to turn it over. So I'm going to place the fabrics on each right side facing each other this way. Make sure to iron your hair stay on the line. So go ahead to arrange yours like this. After doing that, I'll go ahead to join the two pieces together. So on this um, neckline, I'm going to come in by 2 inches. So from that 2 inches mark, I'm going to start and join the two together all the way down. Following this mark that I'm making, I'm going to use the half an inch I added to join the two pieces together, stopping at that 2 inches mark. I'll do the same thing for the other side. I'll go ahead to just join them all the way down together this way. So I'll take it to my sewing machine and stitch it closed. So when I'm done with that, I'll show you guys the next thing to do. So after stitching down, this is what we have. So this remaining part is where the other collar will sit. So let's go ahead now to notch it and turn it over to the right side. So make sure to push out this edge very well. So after I turn this over, this is what it looks like. So at the end of the day, when you are done with your shirt and you um, turn the collar, you are still going to have the right side of your fabric. But this is what we are trying to achieve. This is what it's going to look like on the right side. That is why we have that fabric there. So I'll repeat the same thing for the other side. I'll iron it out and show you guys. So after I turned over and ironed it out, this is what it looks like. This is the wrong side. So I'm still going to use my hemming gum to make that other fabric stable on the wrong side. I hope you guys understand. So when you wear your shirt, it is going to appear neatly like this in front. 
So the next thing we want to do is to join the front and the back panels together. So I'm going to place them right sides facing each other. This way, just go ahead to arrange it on it this way. So you're going to use your hemming gum to um, secure this fabric at the back, this lining fabric. So I'm going to start with the shoulders. I'm going to join them together using the half an inch allowance I added. So before I close up the sides, I want a bit of curved design at the base of my shirt. So I'm going to come to one side and then I'll come up by 4 inches. So you can make yours higher, just depends on the length of your shirt. So since my shirt is a short one, I'm going to just do 4 inches and then I'll curve it all the way down to the base of the shirt this way. So this is optional, you can decide to leave yours straight. After curving out, I'll go ahead to cut it out. So this is what it looks like after I was done. So right now, I'll go ahead to close up the sides using one inch and the shoulder and I'll show you guys. So after joining the shoulders and closing up the sides, this is what the shirt looks like. You can see how beautiful it looks already. And you can see that the button allowance is overlapping on each other. So let's go ahead now to work on the upper part of the collar. So moving over to the upper collar, the first thing is to separate the pattern from the fabric. So when you open it up, you can see that we have two pieces of this collar. Make sure to also iron your hair stay on the collar fabrics. So you can see what we have. So I'm going to place them on each other this way, making sure the right sides are facing each other. After placing the right sides facing each other, come over to this upper part and come down by 1.5 inches. So I'll do the same thing for the other side, 1.5 inches. Starting from that point, I'm going to close it up all the way up this way by half of an inch. So when I'm done doing that, I'll turn it over to the right side and then I'll show you guys the next thing to do. So before I turn it over, I'll go ahead to notch the seam. I'll just notch the part I stitched and then I'll turn it over to the right side. So turn it over to the right side and make sure to bring out all the edges. So I'll go ahead now to iron it and show you guys the next thing to do. So after I ironed it out, this is what it looks like. The next thing is to attach the collar to the neckline. So go ahead to fold the collar into two equal parts and notch the center point. And after that, fold the back neckline into two equal parts this way and also notch it. And then on the wrong side of your shirt, place the open angle of your collar, the point you notched, making sure the point you notched are facing each other this way and then use your pin to hold it down. And then fit in the remaining part of the collar into the neckline using your pins to hold it down just as you can see me doing in the video so fit it in this way all the way into the neckline this way so when i'm done with that side i'll come over to the other side and use my pins to hold it down before i stitch it Make sure you fit in all the open part of your collar into the neckline this way. Fit in all the open part. So after doing that, go ahead now to stitch it all the way down. Go ahead to stitch it all the way down. So notice that there are other methods of fixing your collar to the neckline. I just use this method because it is easier. So go ahead to stitch it all the way down. So when I'm done with that, I'll show you guys the next thing to do. So after I stitch down the collar, this is what it looks like. So you need to iron your SD or your gum stay to the fabric of the collar so that it is more stable. And for this up and back part, you're going to use your weaving machine to just finish it up or turn it over with your bias strip. After that, we're going to do the final part of this shirt, which is the finishing of the base. So because of the curved edge, you're going to do it one at a time. So go ahead to fold in half an inch first and stitch it all the way down. And when you are done, fold in another half an inch again and stitch it all the way to the edge. So I'll put the same thing for this other side. Stitching half an inch first and then stitching another half an inch all the way down. So after I'm done finishing the base, I'm going to cut out a simple basic short sleeve and just insert to the armhole area. I'm not going to show you guys how to do that. I'll cut out a simple basic short sleeve and insert it. So when I'm done with all of that, I'll show you guys the finished products of this shirt. So after inserting the sleeve, this is what it looks like. 
and I also finished up the base of the shirt just like I explained this is what the back of the shirt looks like you can see how beautiful it looks so I'll go ahead to insert the um, buttons and create the appropriate button holes as well so this is where we end this video for today i hope you found it useful and i hope you learned something new so don't forget to give this video a thumbs up leave a comment subscribe to my channel share this video to your loved ones and i'll see you guys in my next video bye